to the secret history living in your aquarium. How's everybody doing? You doing well? Of course, it's always foggy for some reason. I have to like refocus the lens and then bah, it goes back to normal. As you can see, I'm having some allergies in my eye just because, you know, eye, not that important. So, of course, my body always does that. Oh, what's going on? We got Steve Hubbard, Bunny Viper, Father Fish, hello, uh, Euro Gupper, what's up? Has the stream started? Sometimes I stare at the at the waiting screen while the stream has already started. Well, it started now, my friend. Uh, Nanoscaper, what's up? Mark Sturlson, Linda Wirth, Chris George, Michael or D Michael, what's up? Uh, Jamie A, hey, how's it going? Um, Anthony the Aquaman, right on. You're doing your first Wallstead, right? That's great. Uh, hey all, we'll be posting a video tonight. Lack of progress at the aquarium. Things are not going well in Peru at all. Oh man, that's a bummer, Dr. Anthony. Uh, I know you had some trouble with leaks in the tank and, uh, you know, all sorts of other supply issues and stuff, I'm sure, having to do with just being in the middle of the jungle. That and, uh, I mean, I have to thank everybody for the support. Uh, you know, in theory, it's the last... Uh, you know, it's it's July 1st now, but if you do still want to give to the center, um, you can still do so, and uh, they, they can still definitely use that, so I just want to let folks know that, you know, that's an option, right, um, to help support them, especially since their big tank cracked and was leaking and all sorts of other things. I mean, inflation's going nuts, especially in other countries. People don't, may not understand, but inflation is up 7 to 15% around the world. We're right in the middle of the westernized world in inflation. It's not just an America thing or anything like that. The whole world, everyone other than Japan and Singapore, I believe, are the only two countries that didn't have some inflation, if not a whole lot. Some countries had over 50%, like... Uh, Russia, for instance. Uh, but how's everybody uh, doing? I'm happy to say that a lot of the um, first shrimp orders went out. Everything that was on PayPal, everybody who paid me through PayPal, uh, all the Malawa shrimp made it to where they were going or they're going to be there in the morning. Uh, and I'm just curious, you know, if you get an order uh, of the nine I shipped out on to uh, Wednesday and then uh, four on Tuesday uh, and then I'll be shipping out more on this coming Tuesday because Monday's a holiday uh, and that should be the the last of the folks who've paid now there are quite a few people in the emails who emailed me and are like hey I'd love this this and this and then I emailed back well you can pay Venmo PayPal uh, shipping will be this, and uh, the tax is X amount, and the the uh, packing uh, supplies cost me X amount, and that just write a list and send the bill over. Um, and in a lot of cases, the email and the name on the PayPal either don't match, or someone's using a friend or a spouse, um, and that can get confusing. So, you know, if you're doing that in the future, please just let me know. Uh, hey, this is so-and-so. If we've talked on email or on Instagram, you know, um, I, I'm happy to say that 107 people uh, emailed me and wanted something, you know, they wanted uh, either shrimp or plants uh, in that week. And I, you know, that I thought, man, that's way too many to deal with. But then when I looked at the, uh, the the PayPal and Venmo numbers, it was actually only about uh, mm, I think I think there was a total of like about twenty of y'all. So um, yeah, it, it's just um, if you, if you want to, <laughs> your shrimp and stuff, uh, yeah, you got to pay the the money because I got to pay the shipping uh, before it gets there. So. 
you know, that, and I don't want to just ship off stuff without knowing if I'm going to get it back. I mean, I'm here. I'm, I'm accountable, right, guys? You can, you can find me if you need me. But in any case, um, yes, 107 start time. Mick, you are right. Uh, I like that because my grandfather used to make us pick a time, and it would be like 5.03, and he said that would make it stick in our heads so that we would actually show up and do it. <laughs> so I thought that was uh, a clever trick. And it actually works well for me now. Uh, Kara or Kara, hello. Uh, Aqua Waifu. Uh, Aqua Waifu. <laughs> uh, Mick, again, hello. Screaming Fly, what is going on? Uh, Chris Howell, hello. Uh, please be careful with your Independence Day. Animals, stress, loud noises. Yeah, definitely. Zombie Cat, what's going on? Kelly Joe, Jamie A, Anthony, the Aquaman, Bunny Viper, uh, and David Rayner. The Droogs, uh, we're on to uh, the ultraviolence, eh? Um, and then did I say Steve Hubbard? I, I don't know. But let's see who else is sneaking in here. We've got Taylor Foy, who has shrimp headed your way, if not already got him. We got Adam Shook, who crazy roundabout... Let me tell you a little story before we jump into question and answer phase and whatnot. But, okay, so I wrote nine boxes of shrimp that I mailed that day. Shrimp and plants. And uh, on Wednesday... And I wrote, accidentally, I wrote on his, I wrote his uh, address, but without the street name. And then I got the city, the, the zip code, all that right. So when I got to the post office, they're like, hey, this needs a street. Do you know what the street is? So I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I, I totally forgot. I can't believe that. And so I tell them, they type it in, they print out a label that they stick on it. And then it goes on its way. Well... Then I get an email and he lets me know, Adam lets me know that they didn't get it to him, but yet he's gotten the text alert saying his package has arrived and been delivered to a doorstep. So then I'm on hold for like 40 minutes with the post office doing the stupid phone tree. Like if you have had an accident, press one. If you'd like to report an accident, press 1.5. If you have OCD, press one repeatedly, you know, whatever it, it is, I don't know. So it drives me nuts being on hold that way anyways, um, or if you can't even get to hold or to a person. I should have just driven up to the post office because then when I finally got a hold of someone, they said, we can't tell you anything about the address you shipped to. And I was like, what? I should have the address, right? So... Why can't you tell me the address? I've got all the shipping numbers. I've got the receipt. I've got all the proof. And they're like, yeah, I, uh, wh well, where did you think this thing was going? And I, t I tell them and they're like, well, that's close, but that's not where it ended up. But it's in the same zip code and, and that's all they would tell me. And so I assumed it was either at a PO box or the, or the, like the, the, maybe the sorting station. Uh, was my first thought, and then the way she almost read me a, an address, I realized she almost slipped up, uh, the post office gal, and she could see what it was, but apparently they, they can't divulge it, which is really, really frustrating, uh, and because of that, I then was able to, to figure out two or three streets that it could have been on, and figured out like i sent an email with a couple of them but then he i think he'd done the same thing he went to the post office in person and of course when you talk to a person face to face like a normal person they're like oh yeah it went to this place go go ahead and try to get it so he got it and they survived and that is like the triumph of the week that is for sure despite the bureaucracy despite the chaos in life and uh the I don't know what to call it, turbulence of the universe, uh, the shrimp survived, so I was very, very happy about that, um, Kyle, what's up, Kenny, what's up, uh, Corundulin Works, what's up, Rochelle, hello, 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 from Oz, uh, the, the land of Oz, uh, Paul McCarthy, hey, how's it going, uh, Michael Long, hello, 
and W Richter uh, Pisces what's up 3G good to see you tip of the hat Patrick Zimba Zimbabelli uh J B V M J Mster uh Smter Okay Hello how are you uh All right let's see here Hey Fugazi Productions thank you so much Ooh thanks for helping me get my tanks mainly um shrimp and live plants in a healthier spot with your content Yeah you are so incredibly welcome. That is so generous of you. Thank you so much, uh, Fugazi. I, I really, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been a, a really hectic couple weeks. Uh, my life's just always hectic. I don't know why. I probably bring it upon myself, right? I think that's usually the answer. Like, what's the common denominator? Things go crazy only for you? Like, does it happen to everyone else? Does it happen to your wife? Well, yeah, now it does happen to my wife. But... Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's the bottom line is, is that one, I notice things, two, I whine, and three, there is a level of weirdness that just happens, but, uh, one, I want to know if you guys like my lion's mane, uh, pretty cool, right, it's actually very hot, uh, very hot, uh, I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt, so sexy it hurts. I'm too sexy for your body, too sexy for your body. The way I'm disco dancing, I'm a model, I know what I mean, and I do my little turn on the catwalk. Uh, what's going on? What do we want to talk about to do 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 Neighborinos, uh, Dylan's Fish Room, what's good? Stephanie D, Pansy American, hello. Aaron, good fellow. T Bone, good to see you, T Bone. Bud Aquatics, if you guys have a question, uh, please do the at sign and Alex or the at sign and the secret history living in your aquarium. Skeddy Nona, hello, uh, Wayne, how's it going, mate, uh, Alex, hope you are well, mate, finally got the right, uh, the, oh, got the right time for a live stream, keep it up, right on, love, I love to hear that, uh, Adam Shook, my post office told me that the address and printed it out for me, oh, right on. Well, that is handy, considering they wouldn't do anything for me. Actually, you know what? They told me that there would be a review of the case for me, and they said this was the really weird way to phrase it. They're like, it'll be um, 16 to 30... What was it? 16 to 32, I think is what they said, hours uh, before someone responds, and I was like, it's with the holiday, they're going to respond, and they're like, oh, no, business hours, and I was like, so is that business days? Yeah, eight-hour days, uh, but, but, so, you know, 16 hours would be two days from now, and I was like, well, it's, it's plants that are going to be dead, I didn't want to tell them the, about the shrimp in there, because they have weird policies sometimes, I'm, I wasn't sure what their, uh, policy on the shrimp part was necessarily, but, uh, otherwise shipping right now is like 60 to $90, uh, to, to ship things overnight of that size. So no, we're not doing that. We're going to do the flat rate boxes for y'all. Um, I mean, I don't have a problem doing it the more expensive way and overnight and making sure things are safe when it's fish usually, but it, it's just, I knew that, that nobody would want to pay that and it's understandable. Cassie B, hello, you got a minute to sit down? Well, I'm glad. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else is going on in the chat? Hey, it's Kenny talking. Uh, you throw me a towel? All right. Oh, I got a towel from Cass. <laughs> I hope you're doing well, Cass. I miss, I miss seeing you. Uh, balancing scud predators with keeping baby shrimplets alive in a colony breeding setup. Hmm. Wait, balancing scud predators with 
keeping baby shrimplets alive in a community colony breeding setup. Um, a breeding what? Uh, just shrimplets alone, or are there fish? Are there a lot of plants in there and stuff? Um, I mean, scud's not the best thing to breed with shrimp. Like, you probably shouldn't keep your scud culture and your shrimp colony in the same container. Ideally, I mean, you could literally just get a little container, like, 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 uh, right there, or, you know, even a bowl or a pot. Well, you guys have seen my, you guys want to see my scud container? Uh, man, that sounds real, real, like, filthy. Not in, like, a tantalizing way, but just in a, like, that's a mess. Is it uh, the 1st or 2nd of July over here? It is the 1st of July. Um, and Pansy American says, Alex, I have a 40-gallon breeder with six pea puffers and maybe 100 cherry shrimps. The temp is 80 degrees. I wonder if the long-term effect on the shrimp, should I try taking them all out? Well, they'll live much quicker. They'll grow quicker. They'll die quicker. They're more prone to parasites. So I would say, honestly, if, if you can, try to get them out of 80. 80 degrees is pushing it, honestly. Um, so, yeah, I'd be careful with that. Um, by the way, uh, I wanted to also show folks, hey, it's Ginger Graves. What's up, Ginger Graves? How are you, Ginger Graves? I got your email, and I emailed you back, and I, I, I need your, I need your thoughts, your remarks. Oh, I'm so itchy with allergies. Okay, let me turn this around. We're gonna turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around, and we're gonna polish the glass, because it's not... Cooperating. Oh, that's a girl. It's just a girl. I have to wait. So look at this guy. He's like frozen in time. The coolie loach frozen in time, 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 time. Uh, I don't know why he's doing that. The other one's going nuts. So this is the tank that had the crazy cyanobacteria breakout. Uh, you know, it was covering things all over. Well, it's been treated with erythromycin and also water changes, and I think they don't like the erythromycin. I think the loaches are very sensitive to it. Um, and, I mean, actually, the, the loaches in general, the ones up here in this murky lake water, they're also not thrilled. Uh, or, or maybe they are. Maybe they are thrilled, and they're, like, swimming up and down means they're happy. I, I guess I don't speak loach. Um, how long does it take shrimplets to get an inch and a half? Well, with Neocaridina, that's usually about, I'd say probably four to six months, and then by like six to nine months, they d almost double, and then they're like adult size and good to go. Um, so, it happen it kind of sneaks up on you, honestly. Um, Hey, look at this rainbow shiner. It's looking pretty. Uh, can we see it? Did it? Where did it go? It just disappeared. Um, it's hiding. But it was looking so pretty. And the rice fish, they're looking pretty too. With the planaria on the glass. Um, so, the last thing I was going to do was I was going... The last thing ever. And then I quit at everything was going to catch this little bugger. And this little bugger is hard to catch, let me tell you, without smushing her. She's so quick. Um, and she got away again. All right, whatever. Maybe she's just going to stay in this tank now. But right before going live, I caught the other four, believe it or not, are in here. Uh, wait, are four in here, or did one jump? I did hear a splash in here, and I was wondering what that noise was. Like, I just thought it was gurgling in here. Now I'm, now I'm realizing I'm, I'm down a fish. Uh, that, it literally jumped out of here in, like, the few minutes that 
I started the stream. I was like, oh, I got to start the stream. I got to stop what I'm doing. And then uh, now I'm curious as to where he landed. Is he in my blue Malawa bucket? Could that be where he's at? Or is he in the red Malawa bucket? I mean, the, the potential places this guy landed are numerous, but this seems to be the obvious one. You know, I don't see many shrimp in here. I don't, you know, come to think of it, I don't see many shrimp in here either. I'm gonna have to check that there's that those colonies are even stable. But I'm guessing, if I had to guess, since he's not on the floor or anything, I'm guessing he made it into either this tank here, or more than likely, he made it all the way down into here. And he's going to be a Hellraiser for me in here. Which is frustrating. It's frustrating, guys. I'm frustrated. Uh, but I did, I did want to just double check real quick before I... Because he's probably going to just eat all my little Madaka rice fish if he did land in here. And he may just be hiding. But look at all the baby shrimp in here. There's a lot of planaria in this tank too. I need to hit it with no planaria. Look at all the icky, icky planaria. Bad planaria. No good. That's depressing. Lately, I've been feeling like I've had so much other stuff outside of just YouTube and the aquarium stuff. And some of it's great stuff. Some of it's stressful, just work or whatever. Some of it's just life. But I've been feeling like overwhelmed by my tanks, which happens from time to time. Just because also like summer tubbing started so late. I mean, it's we're, we're two months late. For when I would normally put out all the fish that are in here, the gold barbs and the um, paradise fish and the, all the loaches and all that nonsensical things. Well, let's take these ones out before they, before anything goes wrong with this, this uh, piece of the puzzle. We're gonna take them out, and um, yeah, look at the coolie loaches still going. Cuckoo, although no longer suspended frozen in time. So that's uh, that's that's a start. Um, Alright, let's let's take the march, the walk. So uh, oy vey. The ponds this year, I've recently changed the water and uh, oxygenated it all very well. I hope I don't lose you guys on the Wi-Fi. That should, it, the booster should allow it to be out here. But sticklebacks to the brim in this tub. I'll zoom in for Dr. Anthony in a moment. But we need to put these guys in somewhere. So I'm gonna put them in this bucket. Whoa, they just hit the deck. Went straight into the murky green waters. Um, and sticklebacks in here, there are about probably a hundred right now <laughs> in here. Uh, so I got you covered, Dr. Anthony, if you need sticklebacks when you get back to the States. Everything's kind of green water, but the ammonia zero, the nitrites are zero, the nitrates are like under 40 in all of these. So as crazy nasty as they look, especially this one, this one is like the greenest green water I've ever green watered in my life. Um, but the plants in it are just like, oh, we're so happy. Those ones I brought home the other day. Uh, but this thing looks like Mountain Dew, like puts Mountain Dew to shame, honestly. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out which fish to put in here. And I'm thinking the Madaka rice fish just because... I think they'll appreciate the green water more than anybody else, um, definitely. And also, look at the tadpoles. They're getting all big and growing little legs and stuff. So they'll be, uh, they'll need to be put 
somewhere else. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. They're bullfrogs, like I was saying. And we're not supposed to have bullfrogs here. They're invasive. Same with the loaches, but, you know, they're, they're much more... Uh, like they're in the hobby so that make you know i can figure it out and here's that pot by the way uh, i know you guys all like the pot a lot but we got loaches in here we got the the dojos that i caught this morning in here and they're just chilling doing their thing let's turn it around so i can make sure you guys are getting a view this one threw himself uh on the gravel pathway this morning instead of wanting to go into the cup and uh, if you've seen my most recent urban collecting video, you know uh, where I get these guys and how I get them. But uh, these are incredible creatures. Uh, I'm going to be auctioning them off. Uh, some of them, there's, there's a baby one in here that's the most active of all of them. And uh, yeah, here comes another one. See, they'll hit the surface for air. That one's just going to chill like let me poke his tail um and uh yeah there's the baby one under there he's hiding under everything but they can withstand up to 100 degrees fahrenheit water so it can just sit in the sun they can withstand up to something around 200 parts per million ammonia in the water um or is that yeah per million yeah must be pp ppm i think whatever the test kits are like you know how that's like usually 0.5 is too much on the test kits well apparently cooly loaches can just close their gills if they're in a puddle that's real muddy and they can just go to the top and breathe air and then they can just save that breath and decide that they're gonna not breathe or eat or do anything for up to 87 days was the the average LD50 in an experiment. And then, so that's when 50% of them die in the study. Sorry guys, I'm just, I got water on my, on my face and, and hands from the tank. So I wanted to get that washed off so I don't do something dumb like put my hands into another tank and, uh, and compromise the, the security posture of the tank. I know I'm, I'm, I'm walking around and it's annoying. I'm getting grounded again, I promise. I'll, I'll be grounded if I don't get grounded, if that makes any sense. Silver Creek Aquarius, did you know that you're my hero? Did you ever know that you're my hero? Um, you know, I I wasn't sure, but I, I had a, a feeling. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, if you've seen my most recent video, I've I almost titled it "Collecting in the Ghetto" uh, <laughs> because um, you can Google Seattle News right now, and oh man, right where I'm collecting, there was a quinceanera the night that I started the video. Uh, it was a two-day period, and four people got uh, shot, and that's unfortunate. Well, then. The next day, someone, uh, s someone's head, uh, no good. I mean, just crazy. I don't know what's going on in my area. People have gone Looney Tunes. Very, very crazy. Crazy. I have a red really female whose saddle has gone from her shoulders told towards her tail, but hasn't had any berries drop towards her swimmerettes. Is she in part of egg cycle or am I tripping? So she, if they haven't had their eggs come down out under into their swimmerettes, the eggs are not fertilized yet. They're still developing enough to, to, to like have enough protein or whatever. And then they will drop down into there. And once they come out, there's basically a sphincter, I don't have a better word, but there's a constricting little valve that those eggs pop through. And when the males are with the females, what they do is they basically place a big old, uh, think of it as a water balloon full of, or, or Vaseline, like a, a slather of Vaseline there, so that every egg that comes out is gonna get fertilized. 
and then she'll just juggle it. So it's almost, it's not, it's not impossible, but it's very unlikely that any of the eggs that come out of the female are going to come out without that because it's almost like a key and lock system hormonally that, that, um, causes that. The only other thing that can happen is stress, um, can, can also do that, uh, from time to time. But yeah, it's kind of a wild world, baby. Um, so, let's see here. All right, I think we've got, but thank you so much, Fugazi. Man, you got another super chat for $9.99. Thank you, man. Um, do, 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 do. I'm going to scroll down uh, looking for questions. Alex, can bumblebee gobies be in a bowl without air stone? You know, I'm not sure, Cass. Uh, I've kept them in pretty low flow, low, um, low oxygen, but <sighs> mm, I don't know that I would. They really need low TDS and very clear water, um, clean water, low nitrates and things, uh, which is kind of interesting because a lot of them are salt and fresh or brackish, and you'd think that they'd be able to take the salinity and minerality really well, but I guess whatever species out of the 13 of them, bumblebee loaches, or bumblebee gobies, rather, um, yeah, uh, let's see here, do, do, do. For sure, what's up? Big dog, what's up? Will Endler guppies eat shrimp? Yes. Um, they'll eat the babies for sure. They'll try sometimes to eat the adults, but rarely succeed. Uh, okay. Start wearing a cape, huh, T-Bone? All right, I, I'm Fugazi. Um, forget about it. Fugazi though is like the band, and that's what I enjoy more. Plus, it's a made-up character in a Russian novel. So, Fugazi, Fugazi, meh. Hey, uh, hey, it's Grant. What's up, Grant? Hey, Alex, how's it going? Will you get uh, with you tomorrow on coming down in September? Um, yeah, let's figure that out. I remember when it was time in September when I went to Florida and I caught lots of shrimp in Grant's backyard. I'm going to catch me some wild neocaridinas in Grant's backyard. And then I'm going to go over Luca, Lucas Brett's house. And uh, what do I need to catch there? Uh, conspiracies? Conspiracy theories? I think that's what I'll catch over there. Um, a band? I'll check it out. We have similar tastes in music. Right on. Uh, so, does anybody have any fish related questions now isn't that special zen ginger you are an awesome mod and an awesome possum uh thank you if you guys want to become channel members it's a buck 99 you get my extra four episodes that you can listen to as a podcast uh, they're just audio, all four back-to-back, -back, uh, put into one episode. And then they're also on the Aquatic Morning Show because I don't believe in keeping anything from people because they can't afford to pay for something um, educational. And so it's just whatever's new that week in the world of academia, news, and historically, like if, if something happened that day in history or there's some interesting tieback to history, then I'll cover that. Um, and that's called Fishery! Exclamation point. And we just finished episode 101. So thank you guys for making that possible. I really have fun with that. It is a lot of work to track down, uh, you know, whatever, eight pieces of content uh, a week. But I wouldn't trade anything for it. Like, if, if, we can, if I can get by and that can be part of making a living, oh, I love it. 
Uh, Select Pet, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, buddy, for a poop. A poop poop. Um, Silver Creek, and you get to support whoa, uh, Sir Alexander, which is amazing considering he is a human biological encyclopedia. Well, thank you for saying so. Uh, I try. I, you know, I think there's a few additions, like maybe Q and uh, L, that I didn't pay for ever. So, like, you know, from the encyclopedia, there might be a few things missing, but it'll all be uh, alphabetically related, so don't worry about it. Uh, what, med use, what med should I use? Hello, Annette, by the way. Uh, Bolivian Ram Legions? He can't use salt. Or can't use salt. Why can't you use salt? I'm just curious. Um, I would say... I mean, if it's infected, you want an antibiotic that's gram-positive, probably. Gram-positive usually means that it's aerobic bacteria, meaning that it, it lives outside of... Or it lives in a condition outside where oxygen is... The saturation of O2 is, is high. Uh, gram negative back or uh, antibiotics tend to treat more internal stuff or like an abscess within tissue, like uh, uh, or if you had like a dental problem and it was like up in your bone or something. So you have invertebrates. Well, you can take um, you can take your fish out and just put it in a salt dip and then put the the fish back in. That's what I would recommend with most salt dips, anyways, rather than just adding salt. But if you're seeing hole in the head, then you probably want to do more of like a general cure. And then, then it's probably a water quality issue, maybe overfeeding a little bit and maybe stagnant water with high nitrates. But if you have inverts, it seems less likely that that's probably the issue. Um, you need an, 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 an inventive suggestion for a problem. What's that, Barb? And welcome, Barb. Yeah, the, thank God people don't get hole in the head. Uh, yeah, I got it once. And I lost all my teeth. Uh, Alex, do you think the uh, dilution is dilution the solution by dosing fifty percent water changes, or that just uh, or is that just for high tech tanks? Well, you know that's a very good question, Cass. Um, dilution is the solution for avoiding a lot of things. Um, Algae, for one, can definitely be far less likely to occur if you're doing water changes of, like you said, 50% twice a week or something like that. Um, some people do even more. Uh, it's also great for triggering a temperature uh, differential if you want to trigger the wet season for your uh, breeding critters. Like if you have Corydora and you want them to think it's the wet season... Ta-da, it's easy to do at the same time. Uh, the other thing that's great about that is, you know, uh, you're diluting the nitrates and nitrates, nitrites, ammonia, any of that stuff that could be in the water, it is getting diluted. So that is helpful. But really the uh, organics, um, and when I say organics, let's go over here real quick. Uh, what I mean by organics is, all this debris that ends up in a planted tank, if it's a crowded planted tank or whatever, uh, you end up with just stuff. And if you've got snails uh, like I do, um, they'll eat it. And if you've got shrimp like I do, these are from Grant Eater, who's in the chat right now. And look, some of the blues are finally pregnant. Yay! Um, and like... All this debris stuff that's just not living, this dead leaves and shells and just, uh, you know, this kind of stuff here where it's like the roots of red root floaters that detach. All of that, or even just like this stuff on the side, I, I need, desperately need to add water to these tanks. Um, but I was spawning out those rasboras in here. Uh, and I don't know if I if they actually spawned or not yet. We'll find out soon. 
they're the only fish they were the only fish in here and it should be infusoria but i do see little baby blue shrimp right in here which is nice so the shrimp uh one of the other ones must have had babies that's nice so we have a pregnant female um maybe two of oh we've got two pregnant females so that's good um <clears throat> so yeah now i also have a female betta in this tank uh, let me man why is this lens so foggy today or not focusing um and she's uh kind of skinny and, and not the roughest toughest dog in town but the male he is uh rasbo is just quite the specimen if you guys know him um and and they kind of are flirting and feeling each other out but Man, I would almost say that that he is the female. The way look how fat he is right now. He is clearly eating. Well, Andy's also swelling up to look all big. He's a placot, so he doesn't have any fins to really show off with. Um, but in any case, so I just wanted to point them out. But yeah, when you get high enough light, those um, those same things can then lead to algae like this. This little fine hair algae that's slimy. I don't really mind this stuff that much because I can get rid of it so easily. Like within a day or two, if there's just little bits of it on the margins of things, that's fine. Um, it really isn't a big deal. Um, lately, though, I've been having the problem where my nitrates and nitrites, I need more of them badly. I'm not heavily stocking my tanks like I once did. Uh, partially just because of money like I just haven't had uh, money I haven't been spending money quite the same to just get tons of fish to do species spotlights and stuff I haven't felt like compelled to have to do that I have felt like oh uh, you know as as I come as I come along uh, or as I come as fish come along to into my possession I'll, I'll tackle it then but um yeah, the, the debris and stuff, uh, if you're doing water changes, there's a, a much higher likelihood that you'll be able to get, like like this, for instance. This is dead root tissue that's just going to break down and turn into organics. I mean, eventually it'll turn into humic acid, uh, nitric acid, carbonic acid, and uh, ammonia and and all that kind of stuff. But... In the meantime, same with any leaves that are just loose or plants that haven't gotten enough light and they're just weak. Um, but really where I get it the most is with floating plants. I love floating plants. They suck the nitrates and nitrites out of stuff. Um, and they serve as a great little area for fry to hang out, especially with this algae. It almost acts as like infusoria to have kind of a green watery, uh, little area underneath the surface by these things uh, but when when these break down for instance look at I mean like they're just a, a pain uh, and look at the roots on these they just go all the way all two feet of it um, and there's lots of them and they run all over and then they break off and then these things rot and like I showed you guys before that's all infusoria and like some bacteria and stuff but the infusoria is great for for getting fish to spawn and all that but it's not great um, for it can cause things like cyanobacteria or more algae to build up over time however like I said I much prefer this slime algae this stuff here so harmless and a lot of fish eat the slime algae, the filamentous algae. That that's not. This isn't algae. This is moss, obviously. But uh, the algae here's some between my fingers. Um, I don't mind it because uh, it's it's uh, a lot of live bears love it. Um, some cichlids will eat it, and it's also full of little critters that are eating it to survive. But when you let it get big enough you can actually then take kind of like a whole sheet or section of it and stick it together and pull it out. So I don't, I don't so much mind that. Uh, if you, if you have a, a tank that's pristine, new, that's never been um, used and doesn't have a whole bunch of different algae strains already 
uh, somewhat intact in it, then you, I can see wanting to avoid that stuff, um, the, the algae like this, but honestly, it, it's not a big deal just to have it marginally in here. The fish like it and all the little critters and baby shrimp and fry, they, they really enjoy that marginal algae water especially when you can when you know for sure that the nitrates nitrites are so low or non-existent um but that like i said that is though another time when you can get cyanobacteria like i got in the tank the other day now on a side note um luke uh wang sent me uh some persicaria sao paulo and cowagensis or cowagan cow uh i'll never say it right but Man, this stuff has grown like a weed in this tank, which is great. It's usually kind of not the hardiest for me. This time it's like purling, it's bubbling, it's beautiful, and it's it's just a nice red. There's no algae on it. It feels soft, and then the leaves transition nicely. I mean, look at that. It's just a beautiful plant. For some reason, whenever we look straight on on the aquarium, the colors are not accurate. They're way off. They're still not accurate from above. Uh, and then the, the uh, Rotala, or, or yeah, Rotala Vietnam, this was extremely popular with people ordering online shrimps and stuff. A lot of people wanted the Rotala Vietnam, um, which just out of all my plants, it wasn't the one I was expecting. Same with the uh, Sawasertong. People wanted the, the light green, this one, and the dark green that I have too. Anyways, I saw a super chat because my total increased. I saw a cha-ching, and that means that I got to hunt it down in the comments and that I've been slacking yet again. Alex, man, you slacker. You dirty, dirty slacker. Um, no, I don't know of any websites that sell South American shrimp, to be honest, a period. Um, Ginger, thank you. Email reply sent. I have hard water. How do you recommend I acclimate uh, the shrimp to my water? Drip acclimation or how long? Um, honestly, I would drop acclimate them. I, I would just throw them in. Uh, I have some tanks with a TDS of 400 and a pH of like 7.8 and they've been fine in there. Uh, I also have tanks with 5.8 or 6.2 or so pH that are like black watery or or at least uh, lack water as I was calling them when they have the traits but they don't look dark um, just real acidic and they've survived I mean like right now we, we're looking at some of the shrimp some malawas that are in this vase uh, and they're just chugging along, doing their thing, being great. The minnows, the meteor minnows, are right under them. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I would probably drop them in. I mean, drop one or two in maybe, and then wait and see. Because, you know, everybody I sent shrimp to, I ended up sending them. There's more shrimp down here. They just look like white blobs, because these are just the normal kind. We'll see if the... Sorry, guys. Close your eyes if you get motion sick. Here, I'll close them for you. Um, but thank you so much, Ginger. You're telling me what you want to buy, and you give me money. You are such a sweetheart. Um, so, in this tank here, where we have all the Malawa um, variants. Come on. There we go. I was like, what is going on here? So... We had some beautiful blue ones in here. This, like an hour ago when I was, I was filming for uh, Ed, Ed's auction, Ed and Skipper and, uh, I don't know, Rico Stan? I'm not sure who all's actually, who all's officially involved. Fish, Ollie, <laughs> who's officially involved. Anyways, um, so here's just a group of coals. These are my blue coals. My blue coal shoes. Uh, but you can see some of... Well, maybe you can't because, of course, focus is just going to go to hell. 
but some of the 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 uh, Malawas and Gold Nebulas in here, they're just hanging out with the Corys. I mean, they're very bold. They're very outgoing. And um, there's a few blue ones in here that are up to standard, but I cold when they were little, so I need to throw them back into the blue tank. But, like, here is one of the, the beautiful blue ones right here. Um, and let's try to get better lighting. Um, because, again, we're getting reflections and all, all sorts of problems here. And then here are the gold nebulas. Uh, some of them, anyways. If Is it going to let us... Let's see here. Is it going to let us... Uh, I think this is just a digital zoom and that's why it sucks is because it's just it's not actually clear clearing up the picture or anything it's just zooming in on it but if you see the white banding on some of these on their backs and dots uh, in the clear pictures in the community tab or the standalone videos uh, you'll notice that those um, that those stand out quite a bit but here you can see we've got more blues in the coal tank. I mean, there's a few there's a few reds and a few blues that are just um, totally up to standard. I mean, there's actually about five, six blues in here that I could pull out. So it's interesting that the the coal tank is now starting to get more blue, uh, whereas originally my third or fourth generation I was pulling out almost you know 95 percent there's a red and a blue right next to each other um and that's you know a soft blue there but the blues have a lot of iridescence to them and i'm really i would really love to know if anybody else is working on anything remotely the same about the color of malawas i don't hear them being mentioned much but they're just such a lovely shrimp and the bottom line is whoever pays me on PayPal or Venmo is on the list. I've got three more people to send out shrimp to. But I had a lot of people email me, tell me that they wanted the list, which I posted in the same video where I said I'm selling my Malawas. And I'm not selling them all. I'm just, I'm just selling for the first time ever. I'm allowing the blue strain out into the world. There, there's another blue one. Um, I'm letting them out into the world. It's It's been six or seven years, and I've decided it's time to allow others to work on the project if they want. But there's also all the coals that I've had produced. Um, like, you can see them down in here. Um, that have just spawned because, uh, because of how much I feed and, and am breeding to get that selection. So, a lot of them are just the, the normal tone ones. Uh, and then we've got some nice pregnant ones here. You can see how many babies they have. They've got smaller eggs than the Neo Caridina. Uh, but on, on a light substrate, they tend to go clear a lot more. Uh, which is sometimes frustrating. Whereas, like, some of them will stay pretty dark. Like, that one is very dark, where the other one's clear. They're just a, a really interesting shrimp, uh, kind of unpredictable in their color changes. They can change colors on a dime. Oh, frozen in time again. What did I say? That is just weird. Whoa. When you're cold as ice, you're not willing to sacrifice my love. When you're cold as ice. What's going on in here, people? Um, can Colombian uh, giant ram's horn snails, uh, ear roundworms, excreted from fish that have used Expel P by Fritz? Expel P by Fritz is Levamisol. It's goat dewormer. It's like industrial grade, the, the toughest dewormer you're going to really get. I mean, of course you have to use it properly. Nothing, no medication works right if you don't use it properly. Oh, wait, she's in her spawning colors. You know, this is the story of the couple. This is the story of the couple that never spawns. Even though she hides in the tank all day. 
or in the cave all day. But she never has babies, and I so want to see the little Crebenzis looking babies. I mean, man, that would be awesome. And she was bright blue for me when her. Yep, there we go. So she's blue and yellow. She's all in her spawning color mode. He's not. But no babies. I don't, and I don't. I can't figure it out. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um. Let's see here. There were some giant Malawa in here. On the black substrate, there some of them are really dark too. Some of the natural tone ones. Let's let's there's one like right in front of our faces if we can get rid of the glare. Right here. Oh, where did he go? He jumped. Shrimp just like disappear when they jump sometimes. Hey, and we've got a little uh, a little least killifish. I seriously don't know where these are coming from. I, there's not a, a mother that I know of in here, and I'm just wondering if there was like a stunted one that was hanging out in here, and then just kept hanging out. I, I don't know. But here we've got more of the Malawa, uh, and this is the red coal tank, and you can see we got a female that's fairly rusty red with the big belly full of babies, and that's with in this tank. Are there, granted, there's a lot of guppy grass. But right here, boom, Beta Machiensis, uh, and there's a male and female pair, then Guppies, then uh, Lamia Tridens, and this has around a 400 TDS, uh, and yet they're thriving, so for Ginger asking, uh, there you go. Now, this little guy, he's had this tank to rule to himself with two females, or where are the females? Um, and I'm just interested in how he's going to spawn. I think he might be a successful colony spawner because he's very dedicated to guarding the whole tank, and that's the the trait amongst uh, above, all, above everything else in Vadis. If you want a community breed or colony breed. You need to find the ones that don't beat up on the females uh, and chase them for being in their territory and instead protect them. And then you end up with this lovely, uh, you know... Oh, is that a fry? No. Um, so I just keep an eye out for fry, but soon uh, I'll probably be feeding them some more food. She's actually dropped most of her eggs. You can see through her. She's See the yellow on her belly? Um, right after the little white dot or, or bump usually that gets full of eggs so she must have already laid eggs and either have them laid there or uh, just finished laying them and this guy meanwhile you see the void where the females will have eggs right before they lay them in that same belly area so it's nice to film them from low and film upwards in a fish room for some of the nano fish because you can really tell what's in their bellies for egg egg stock like CPDs are that way too um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you guys was uh, all the rice fish in here I need to put them out in the green water tank I'm pretty sure um, I think that's the plan I don't even know how many there are but those are the red caps from aquatic arts uh, that I got and uh, yeah there's a good amount for uh, like a gallon mayonnaise jar some of those stay so tiny and it's it's funny I can never figure out I guess it's an evolution an evolutionary strategy so that uh, you don't put all your eggs in one basket so to speak um, now this is something else uh, I wanted to show you guys that I was slightly concerned about all this mulm that's building up so quickly all this mulm being made by the loaches and by these little creatures, <laughs> the nanochromis. Obviously, I love the nanochromis that Luke sent me. They are one of my all-time favorite fish. Um, all, I mean, there's a lot of my all-time favorite fish in this tank, uh, to be honest. But it's kind of uh, rife. This, this mulm that you see this guy was digging through... Um, and also, since there's been no CO2 on this tank, which started with CO2, uh, 
look at how the 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 plants in the back are doing not good now the crypts and stuff are doing great the some of the other stuff's doing okay uh but a lot of stuff is not good after having co2 like just cutting it off on them uh the hair grass uh and then the the baby tears are what really uh, and Monte Carlo, they're super rife for becoming uh, cyanobacteria strongholds. So what I'm going to probably end up doing is going through as much as I hate to do it and sucking up most of this mulm just to get the organic solids level down in this tank. Um, this fish is so, they're so flighty. These, this guy is fine, but this one is so flighty. It like keeps coming to the front and then spazzing out. And I think, is this a male or a female? Let's see. Does he have a solid tail? Okay, this is the male. With the red checkered lower back tail fin, caudal fin. And then the other one is only half the caudal fin is colored. Um, now, I think the, uh, the gouramis in here, the sunset gouramis, they've been blowing bubble nests in here pretty much nightly right in here and um this area has kind of gotten it's definitely not getting much much mixture of the the water or anything but we are getting some really pretty flowers of the bacopa and some flower starts um and then there was another spot where those guys were hanging out um the nanochromis uh, oh, yeah, there it is. So there's the other male nanochromus. There's the female. And then there should be one more over here probably playing. So, yep, right in the back over there. So we got a pretty full tank here. Everything needs to get water changed. Um, the CPDs are all doing well. I'll probably spawn them out in another tank in a while here. Um, the, the, the pearl, or, or, or not pearl, sorry. The, uh, the rosy loaches, I love these little guys. Let's see the little spotted females. They're really cute. They're only an inch long. And the males are just incredible right now. There's one that's not in the game for biggest male. But look at the difference when they're in it for dominant male. It's like neon orange. Like glow-in-the-dark colors. If we can see it from above, maybe you guys will actually get to see the color. Because like I said, the colors are just jacked up on the live streams. But that one is like pumpkin orange. I mean, probably like these guys are showing up, even though these are more red in my real life. The, the lovely little rosy loaches are, are like that. And then, uh, yeah, so the inlay tank is definitely, other than a, the my panda panda loach tank that I had for a while with blue dream shrimp this is my favorite tank I've ever had now the nanochromis shouldn't be in here and the sparkling garamis that's debatable they're not endemic to uh, lake inlay or anything uh, but everything else works from Cambodia from Myanmar and uh, it's it's been one of my all-time favorite tanks for sure I can just sit and watch that one so long. Okay, I need to read your guys' questions and comments and thoughts. And yay! <laughs> 87 of you, wow. Uh, you know, I'm honored, but hit the like button or get out. I suppose I should get more professional, put up the green screen that I ordered, and uh, just have like video of my aquariums in the background, and just sit still and stop going all over the place. That's probably way more professional. Um, Jay Oliver, I hope you're healthy and doing well also. I need to like... So humid in that other room. 
Do, 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 do. How would you acclimate an axle? You know, I don't know about axolotl. Shanna of 503 knows a lot about axolotls. I think, is it Zen Ginger? Don't you, don't you have an axolotl too? But I, I just don't. I just don't know. Um, I know they get stressed easily and their slime coats and things can get damaged easily, but they are a very diverse and hardy animal that can withstand cold and heat and all sorts of things. It's just, it's got to be gradual, I would say. Um, that's kind of the key to it all. Uh... Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. What am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? Alex, do you keep black worms in your substrate? Um, I do try. Um, but, you know, if I have Corydora or loaches, they're usually gone within probably two months. Um, but if I don't have those, if I, if I have more midwater fish... They'll, they'll do okay in the substrate for a while. I don't know that they've, uh, what's the word? Like, not flourish, but that they, like, thrive. But they survive. Um, I just haven't had them spawning or whatever, multiplying that much. Um... <laughs> Listening while I... Finish painting the new house before moving fish. Well, all right. Alex, your broadcasts are fine just the way they are. Well, maybe without the mucus, Cam. <laughs> uh, Foxy Fishes, what's up? And Liquid Zoo, hello, hello, hello. Josh, what's up? I am well. I hope you are well also. Um, oh, you're having dinner for your 10-year anniversary? Well, happy freaking anniversary, Silver Creek. Seriously, that's awesome. Happy 10-year anniversary. I'm coming up on our... We're coming up on our 10-year anniversary, too. Um, is it September, I guess? Yeah, September or October? Well, it depends on when we want to count it from. But if we want to count it for marriage, September. Um, can you freeze grind earthworms from the backyard for fish? Um, I wouldn't freeze them in a normal freezer. Most worms that are frozen for the food industry are done so flash frozen so it takes it down to like negative 30 you know and then with that it doesn't burst the cell uh the cell membrane uh in in animals a lot of times doesn't you know it expands a bit and then it bursts in plant cells the crystals just jut out through it and and shred it but that's why stuff that's frozen gets kind of mushy and like white and ghostly and just kind of like pale and and limp if it's like a vegetable or whatever um mushrooms too can end up with goo and um if you could do it quick enough then it's not a problem then you can preserve it but unless you have that with like dry ice and a vacuum sealer uh, i would think that the worms being so full of water and everything that they probably just turn into mush when you pull them back out i would think um well, guys, you got any um, aquarium support? What is this all about? Aquarium braziers? <laughs> well, it's about time. Patty! Everybody, Patty's here. We can, we can, uh, we can do uh, bad things now. We can, we can all quit having to behave, and, and we can be bad. Alex, can you recommend a website where I can buy South American shrimp? No, I don't know where to buy uh, Euro Gupper. I don't know, like I said earlier, I don't know where to buy uh, South American shrimp, even for America. Um, maybe some of the ghost shrimp out there on the market are. Uh, but for, from what I know, unless you can find grass shrimp from South America, 
none of the species are really in the hobby yet, which is very perplexing. Um, Dr. Anthony would probably know what all is out there. I'll have to call him and ask. And there's some reports that there's some interesting shrimp in Peru on the coastal side, um, which, which is, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, do, when do, uh, female beta get their gravid spot? When they're, um, when they're having babies, when they're fertile and they have eggs that need to be fertilized, that's usually when they'll get their gravid spot. Petco and Amazon have AquaClear 50s for 26 bucks. I think that's a good deal. Other sizes on sale. Tetra Whisper pumps are cheap too. Oh, right on. Thanks for the heads up, uh, First Class Fish. Yeah, that, that's a good deal. I mean, I love the AquaClear hang out the back filters. Nothing's, or, nothing's perfect, but they work reliably. I'll put it that way. Um... At what age do sparkling gourami start breeding? Mm, nine months to a year usually. Something like that. About an inch long. A little under it. Um, in the wild though, I hear um, that they are uh, quite different. Uh, that they grow up much quicker. And... and uh, a lot of those nano fish in the wild, because of their diet and what's available, they grow up so quick. I mean, it's like watching the dojo loaches in that pond that I've been frequenting. Sorry, guys. I am so itchy. Um, there are, they're nuts. They're, they're just out of control. They're uh, wild and crazy guys. Uh, they were an inch to two inches long at most two months ago and now some of them are like four inches and I can't find any that are under two inches so I think they've literally all been growing that fast um kind of crazy um rimless aquions yeah I know last year I was able to get some of the rimless aquion uh kits for just dirt cheap um they they had their own like in-store manager special that they kind of cobbled together and some stores had them some didn't some included a light some didn't but yeah oh they had the new 60 breeder nice um yeah those are really cool dolbeck aquatic design aqua designs what's up uh i'll uh, me, <laughs> I've got gold ram uh, that keeps fitting its food and ends up not eating. I worry about the other fish and rams eating the same food without any issues. You know, you could have a blockage in in its in its belly. What I would do is I would get um, some green peas and I would cut them open, uh, like blanch them or get them from. Uh, a place where they're shucked, or even not shucked, but chuck them yourself. And then those little two slivers that make up the seed inside a pea pod, the actual in the actual pea, you get that stuff, and you mash it up, and you add about two parts that to one part garlic, fresh garlic clove, and you mash it up into a paste. And then you put that in the water with some of their favorite food, their favorite food normally, and you try to see if they'll eat it. If they'll eat it, a lot of times that will give them diarrhea, basically, and they'll clear out any blockage, because that really sounds like a blockage issue, um, if not stress. It could just be stress, too, but when fish stop eating like that, um, it's usually because of that. If it had a parasite, it would be eating more, usually, by getting a sunken belly. Um, so, yeah. Suggestions for killing invasive tiny ram swarm snails um, without hurting uh, nearites and shrimps. Uh, I think they put holes in my plant leaves. 
Uh, they might cleaning the algae off. Sometimes they get a little overzealous. But I would say, hmm, snail trap probably, or take a piece of zucchini or broccoli or blanched anything and uh, leave it in the tank and uh, over at, at night with the lights out. And then about an hour later, come back, maybe two hours, and just gather them up. Just take a net and take the piece of zucchini that will have them all over it, shake it off into the net, then take it, put it back on the floor of the tank. Ta-da! It's good to go. Um, yeah, and then just do that until there's less and less of them. It's usually overfeeding that brings them. Uh, Yeah, salt can also help with uh, a uh, with uh, constipation because a lot of times it's you know it's uh, the um, salt can act as like uh, basically a magnet to the other fluids that should be building up uh, in the waste systems in the kidneys and liver of the fish. So it's kind of like electrolytes. The salts are like uh, electrolytes. And that allows them to, to consume more of the water osmotically. I know I'm so itchy. I need to get off of here and take a shower. That's that's the, the bottom line. I am going insane. Uh, where can I get painted fire cherry shrimp? Uh, Aquatic Arts, Grant, Garden of Eater, uh, Lucas Bretts, lots of places, definitely. Um, but, yeah... I'd probably go through Garden of Eater, but yeah. So I'm going to end it, guys, because I'm so freaking itchy. I'm going to lose my mind. I shouldn't have gone uh, earlier today. I went fly fishing and went collecting some native fish uh, to share with y'all in, in an upcoming video. And I definitely went through like dogwood or cottonwood or something and like my arm was getting all better and now like I'm getting the the welts again and the the like little blister I don't know, it's nuts. Um all right guys, we're going to end on a song. I want to sing a song. Uh I, I want to sing if you want to sing out, sing out. If you want to be free, be free. Cause there's a million things to be, you know that there are, you know that there are. And if you wanna be you, be you. And if you wanna be me, be me. Because there's a million things to be, you know that there are, you know that there are. Um, that wasn't the song I wanted to sing, though. This one's a comedy song, uh, kind of, but it's from 1951 by Phil Oates, Oaks, Oates, Oates, Phil Oates, uh, O-C-H-S, he's a folk singer. If you don't know who he is, you should check him out, especially if he's before your time. Don't just think that, uh... Johnny Cash was a badass. There were some Pete Seeger and, you know, man, there's some people that were uh, pretty radical. Hank Williams even. I mean, there's some people that were very, uh, like, true revolutionaries. Look at this uh, welt. Oh, no. Man, I knew that hurt a little too much. If you guys can see it. That is going to be shingles. Um, I can tell by the little nodes on it, the way it's... That sucks. That's why I'm getting itchy. I always get it when when my, when my lupus, when I get stressed and my um, immune system gets all overtaxed, I, I get shingles pretty easily, and it's no fun. Um, all right, so... Everybody, this is a song that I think, even though it came out in another time, it's pretty fitting. Um, but I'm going to sing a different song. But look up Love Me, Love Me, I'm a Liberal. Uh, I don't think I could do that without getting demonetized. Yeah, I am already uh, Zen... I am taking steroids, unfortunately. Uh, and I'm if I could afford it, it's like 
$2,800 a month to take the injection that would prevent all this, but I can't afford that every month. Um, on top of the other seven or $800 medical bills and prescriptions and stuff. So I just deal with it, but they've got me on methyltrexate, um, hydrazine, um, uh, What's the other one? Oh, cortisone cream and uh, Elid I think it's called Elidel cream. And then um, there's also, I, I can't remember. Anyways, you're the pharmacist, so I thought you'd want to know, but I guess everyone else, that, that's probably not that interesting. But in any case, if for anybody suffering with autoimmune stuff, I get it, it sucks. But yeah, methotrexate and prednisone combo is awful. It makes you feel like garbage. Um, all right. Well, I'm just a typical American boy from a typical American da town. I believe in God and Senator Dodd and keep an old Castro down. And when it came time for me to serve, I knew better dead than red. But when I got my old draft board notice, I said, buddy, this is what I said. Sarge, I'm only 18. I got a ruptured spleen and I always carry my purse. I got eyes like a bat and my feet are flat and my asthma's getting worse. Yes, uh, think of my career, my sweetheart dear, my poor old invalid aunt. Besides, I ain't no fool and I'm already in school and I'm working in the defense plant. I got a dislocated back and a racked up back and I'm allergic to flowers and bugs. And when the bombshell hits, I get epileptic fits and I'm addicted to a thousand drugs. I got a weakness woes, I can't touch my toes, I can hardly reach my knees. And if the enemy came close to me, then I think I'd probably sneeze. I said, I'm only 18, I got a ruptured spleen and I always carry my purse. I got eyes like a bat and my feet are flat and my asthma's getting worse. And he said, yes, my dear, my poor sweet dear, my poor old invalid aunt. Besides, I ain't no fool and I ain't going to school because I'm working in that defense plant. Oh, uh, <clears throat> Castro lies. I mean, I guess I hope he dies. Uh, but one thing you gotta see... Someone's got to go over there, and that someone isn't me. So I wish you well, Sarge, give them hell. Uh, kill me a thousand or more, and if you ever want a war with without blood and gore, I guess I'll be the first to go. But I'm only 18, I got my ruptured spleen, and I always carry my purse. I got eyes like a bat, and my feet are flat, and my asthma's just getting worse. Yes, think of my career, oh sweetheart dear. Think of my invalid aunt. Besides, I ain't no fool, and I'm going to school, because I'm working in a defense plant. Yeah, see, I kicked out like 15 people right off the top. Love that old song, though, about getting out of the, the freaking draft. I think it's funny. Uh, and someone's going to be like, oh, I went to Nam. It's not, nothing's funny about dodging the draft, but sorry, that song's funny. Uh, thinking of all the excuses to get out of serving, pretty much all listed there. Uh, it's a real twangy kind of song, but I like that song. And uh, that's what you get. So now I'm going to go take a shower, calamine lotion, and I'm going to go uh, maybe watch Kenny um, and maybe watch Father Fish or maybe watch uh, Lucas Bretz. Maybe. You, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, really, other than take a shower and put more cream on. Um, uh, so, yeah, Corundulin works. You are, your grandpa is correct. Yes. Um, all right, guys, you know, thank you so much tonight. Uh, we got some really nice super chats. It says we got a total of $50 super chats. Thank you so very much. It's so kind. Plus, I know so many of you are members. So many of you just watch the videos, and really, that's the most you can do. Checking in, making sure the bell's selected. That means so, so much to me. Um, I just appreciate you guys. You guys rock, and uh, man, I just, 
I'm really grateful. And right now, you know, I feel like I'm dragging a little bit with my health and stuff. Um, I'm always fascinated by fish and history and um, all that. But I just, you know, you guys are helping me through it. And I appreciate it. And I thank you. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful night, wonderful weekend. Probably have another video out this weekend. And then I'll be back on Monday with live stream at 7.30 in the evening or 10.30 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> and, uh, you know, thank you, Ross. Thank you, uh, D. Michael. Appreciate it. Lean on me. <laughs> yeah. You better think, think, Patty, what you're trying to do to me. All right, guys. So thank you, Lurkers. Thank you, Mods. Uh, basically... Uh, Zen Ginger, thank you tonight, and uh, thanks for putting up with my craziness and my singing and the ADD and the OCD and the DDD and the DND and the triple B. Uh, all right, guys, I'm gonna get. Yeah, I need to go take the shower. I'm gonna shut up and take the shower. Shut up and take the shower. All right, thanks, guys. Treat your critters nice. Treat your. Uh, plants nice and treat the people around you nice or they're not going to love you and if no one loves you you're going to die alone see you next week i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i'm that, that that was that was bad uh please take care of your critters your plants your tank your cycle keep yourself balanced and cycled and i don't know what that means cycled uh and uh you know just Make sure that you're taking care of yourself enough that you can take care of others uh, because, you know, that's what the world should be about. So, yeah, I am probably stinky. My wife, she's ruthless about that. If I'm stinky, like, because today I went fly fishing for a few hours. Uh, she got home and she just goes, you need to take a shower yet. What's wrong with you? And just, like, walks out of the room. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Uh, breathe consciously. Good advice. I like that. Thanks again, everybody, for being a part of this community. Thanks, Replay Crew, Lurkers, all of y'all. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to fly away. I'm going to fly away, fly away, fly away, fly away. All right. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Mamma mia, mamma mia. Mamma mia, let me go. One inch for the road for Patty. See you in Saturday morning cartoons if I wake my silly butt up.